Hey guys, as you've probably heard by now, the new iPhone 6 is in stores. If you're one of the millions who is going to pick one up or have already done so, I have a great way for you to make some extra cash. You can get up to $400 when you sell your old phone on eBay. That's up to $200 more you can get at other places. Still not sold on the deal? eBay is so confident that your phone will sell that for a limited time, they'll hook you up with a $100 coupon if it doesn't. That's awesome. Click the link in the description box below or go to www.ebayforthewin.com to see how much your phone is worth. Are you still watching? Why? Click below and get that money. After this video finishes, of course. I know what you're thinking. Hey moron, why are you comparing the Galaxy S5 to the iPhone 6 Plus? Shouldn't you be comparing it to the Galaxy Note 4? Well, yes, but there are two points I want to make. First, we don't have a Galaxy Note 4 on hand, and there's no point in comparing it to the Note 3. Two, the Galaxy S5 sits exactly between the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus in screen size, literally smack dab in the middle. So it's no better suited to be compared to one over the other, despite the Galaxy Note 4. Now that that's out of the way, let's get on with it. I'm Taylor Martin with Pocket Now, and this is the iPhone 6 Plus versus the Samsung Galaxy S5. The iPhone 6 Plus is a beautiful mashup of aluminum and flowing glass. That is, except for those damn polycarbonate spacers no one seems to like. Otherwise, it's a very pretty phone that, like Michael says, almost makes you feel like you shouldn't be holding it. The Galaxy S5 is quite the opposite. It doesn't feel fancy or special. Its plastic trim, which is painted to look like metal, feels cheap and flimsy. So does the faux perforated leather around the back. It's super lightweight, much lighter on the bezels than either iPhone, and comes packed with at least a dozen sensors you might never use. The fingerprint scanner, for example, is not all that compelling. Like the iPhones, it's embedded in the home button, however you must swipe your finger over the scanner instead of simply holding it there. This is both awkward and difficult to do one-handed, and it fails to work at least half the time. The iPhone's Touch ID sensor requires the user to simply place their finger on the button. After a short pause, the iPhone unlocks. But let's talk guts for a minute. On paper, the Galaxy S5 is the more powerful, more capable phone. It has twice the RAM, and if you include removable storage, it has more storage options than the iPhone, 16GB built in, with up to 128GB in add-on storage. Though with a maximum of 128GB on the iPhone 6 Plus, we're confident both will have ample storage for just about any type of user. The camera on the Galaxy S5 has double the resolution, and its CPU has twice as many cores and nearly double the clock speed. The iPhone 6 Plus does, however, have the advantage in battery power, 11.1 watt hours to the S5's 10.78. Both phones have NFC, though the iPhones has locked to Apple Pay, Bluetooth 4.0, and Wi-Fi AC. The S5 has a heart rate monitor, IR blaster, and a notification LED, none of which come on the iPhone. And not to forget, the S5 has IP67 certification, so you don't need to worry if your phone takes a dive into a cup of water or a pool. The 6 Plus does have a significantly larger display, though. Its IPS LCD is 5.5 inches diagonally, while the S5 has a 5.1 inch Super AMOLED panel. Both are 1080p, meaning the density is marginally higher on the S5, but the major display differences are the more vibrant colors, higher contrast, deeper blacks, and broader brightness range on the S5. Obviously, you have more real estate on the 6 Plus, as well as more natural looking colors and better daylight visibility. Both panels look awesome, but if you're after more dramatic everything, the Super AMOLED panel is the way to go. That display difference also means there's a sizable difference in device footprints. The Galaxy S5 is much easier to wield and use one-handed. The iPhone 6 Plus is 16.1mm taller, 5.3mm wider, and it weighs a whopping 27 grams more, yet it's 1mm thinner. In fact, it's incredibly thin. Dangerously thin, as some unlucky users who pulled bent iPhones out of their pocket learned the hard way. But let's not get all bent out of shape over the so-called bend gate, as we have yet to hear any official statement from Apple, and we don't know how widespread the issue is yet. That said, Apple is reportedly looking into it, and is considering replacing damaged units. I, for one, have been using the 6 Plus without a case and carrying it in my somewhat tight front pants pocket for nearly a week now, with no issue. Either way, the iPhone certainly gets our vote of approval on aesthetics and build quality. It actually looks and feels like a high-end phone. That said, the S5 isn't bad, it's just not quite as nice to look at or hold. On the software side, Samsung's TouchWiz and Apple's iOS have never been more alike, thanks to extensibility APIs in iOS 8, which allow third-party keyboards, third-party sharing, and even today widgets in Notification Center. But make no mistake, 
iOS and Android, especially TouchWiz, are very different at their respective cores. This version of TouchWiz is more TouchWizzy than ever, packing countless features and add-ons that some may never care to use. The My Magazine, for instance, is just a baked-in version of Flipboard that's no more useful than the actual app. However, some features are useful, like Toolbox, a floating bubble of user-definable apps, or Multi-Window, true split-screen multitasking. While TouchWiz is more toned down than usual, it still tries too hard to be everything at once, to cater to all types of users with every possible feature. The result is a few features that stick out and find their way into our routines, and three times as many half-baked ideas that don't benefit anyone iOS 8 brings some much-needed improvements to iOS, mainly the aforementioned third-party support. But there's a catch. It's taking some time for developers to update their apps to support third-party sharing, and third-party keyboards are very buggy. That said, today widgets are a redeeming factor. While most of them are just at-a-glance informational widgets for things like agenda and news feeds, some simulate a similar function to the toolbox feature I mentioned, giving you app shortcuts in Notification Center or quick entry into Evernote. The most disappointing aspect of iOS 8 on the 6 Plus, specifically, is the lack of so-called phablet features. Apple had the perfect opportunity to bring split-screen apps into the fray, but it didn't. Instead, it gives you a reachability feature accessed by double-tapping the home button, split-pane views in certain apps, and a landscape home screen. Three things I have yet to find very useful. If you've been satisfied with iOS in the past, iOS 8 is just the icing on the cake. TouchWiz is still TouchWiz, albeit somewhat better than before. But if we had to choose a winner in software, for the first time in a very long time, it would go to the iPhone. In daily performance, both handsets are quite snappy, but you'd expect the S5 with the beefier CPU and faster clock speed to run circles around the iPhone. Not so. In fact, we'd give a slight edge to the iPhone for its more consistent scrolling, pinch zooming, opening apps, and overall performance in general. Gaming and benchmark scores also show how close performance is between these two. To the general consumer, it's indistinguishable at best. But these are both newly set up phones. Over time, the iPhone has the reputation for maintaining its stellar performance for at least the typical two year cycle. Samsung's devices don't have quite the same reputation and sometimes slow down over the course of a few months. Like Michael found, the speaker on the iPhone is noticeably better than the rear firing speaker on the S5, even if it's much easier to completely mute with the palm of your hand. It's louder, more crisp, and full. Where this comparison takes a strong diversion from the iPhone 6 comparison is in battery life. The iPhone 6 Plus has an 11.6 watt hour battery, and we've yet to kill it in a single day. It's capable of lasting at least a day and a half on normal usage, and a full day on really heavy usage. The Galaxy S5 doesn't have quite as much stamina, but it does have a removable battery as well as some power saving features. So depending on whether you're okay with lugging around a spare battery in your pocket or backpack, you could call this a draw. Network performance here on the Verizon Wireless Network in Winston-Salem, North Carolina is also similar between these two devices. Call quality, surprisingly, is a little better on the Galaxy S5. It's more crisp, while the iPhone is a little more muddy with more background noise. And even in a relatively weak coverage area, both managed acceptable data speeds. And then there's cameras. Both phones use phase detection, autofocus, and lock onto subjects very quickly. However, we've had more problems out of the S5 with shutter lag, resulting in blurry photos. That's especially true in low light, wherein the iPhone uses optical image stabilization. Even in poor lighting, it has a sharper focus, captures more detail, and results in brighter photos overall. The S5 seriously struggles in low light, and the software stabilization Samsung uses doesn't help all that much. In broad daylight, the S5 is capable of taking very nice, vibrant photos with lots of detail. It has double the resolution to work with, so there's more room for cropping, but colors are more realistic on the iPhone, even if they're often a little more drab and cool. In most cases, we were more pleased with the photos taken with the iPhone 6 Plus. In the end, we're left with two very solid, very well-rounded smartphones. The Galaxy S5 has a little something for everyone, and the iPhone 6 Plus has some things many existing iPhone users have been looking for all along, third-party integration and larger hardware. Apple ultimately failed to capitalize on its larger hardware, not offering any truly useful way to use the extra display space. But at the same time, Samsung failed to cut all these useless frills and only added more. The water resistance on the S5 is something sure to draw buyers, especially those with a more active lifestyle. But overall, if I had to pick one, it'd be the iPhone 6 Plus, hands down. It's more reliable in terms of performance, I prefer its camera over the S5s, especially in low light, and the battery life is certainly better. 
The only thing that gives me pause, however, is pricing. With a two-year agreement, the base model 6 Plus is $100 more than the S5. Without, it's $150 more, and you can add $100 more for each storage option. Ladies and gents, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel to see more iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus coverage over the next week. Be sure to follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and Instagram at PocketNow. I'm Taylor Martin, Casper Tech on Twitter, and I will see you next time.